Hello everyone, it is time to talk about a game again and for this we have Justin. Hello everyone. And we'll talk about the new game from Eugene Interactive, uh, Wano, which is short for Warning Order. And as many of you know, um, Eugene made the Steel Division series and even more important here, the, the War Game series. Now, to make it, put it on a very short point, which Justin made lately when we played it, the game is very solid, the base game is very solid, but it lacks a lot of content. So now, Justin, you are the Wargame expert. Um, what Can you expand on that? Sure. Um, I guess I'll mention briefly that, yeah, I'm not... Um, Bernhard didn't just dig me out of a dumpster pointlessly. Um, I've played a lot of Eugen games. Actually, I've played every Eugen game since Ruse, um, and I've got probably all told over a thousand hours in all of the different war games. Um, and I've played a lot of Steel Division as well, so I'm very familiar with the Eugen game formula. I'm War Game is one of my favorite series, so Warning uh, Warning Order is something that I'm very very interested in. Um, at the moment, it is early access, and it seems to be a, an actual genuine early access title. It's not air quotes early access where they just dump something out and then don't fix anything. Um, at the time of recording this, they've had one patch every business day. Um, they're very receptive to feedback on their official Discord server. Um, there's a lot of back and forth about changing all sorts of stuff. Um, at the moment, for someone who wants to just pick up Warning Order and play it as a game, um, a lack of content is the main issue right now. There's only one battle group um, for NATO and one for the Soviets at the moment. Um, I guess it, we should, I should mention that what a battle group is in Warning Order is kind of a, a deck. So in the game, you pick a deck based on a um, in war game in the past it's been on a nation but in steel division and now in warno it's based more on a specific unit so right now they have the 17th or sorry uh, 79th guards tanks and the third armored division um, in game right now so two very high-end um, armored divisions one for nato and one for the soviets um, that means that for a lot of people it's not a whole lot to work with right now uh, you yeah. get pretty tired of the, the handful of units they have in there. They're both the same type of gameplay as well. They're both high-end armored uh, decks, which is personally not my thing, um, which is the right now, I think, and I, I think this is a good thing, is that that's the biggest thing that's preventing me from really getting into Warno right now, is that they don't have, they ha have yet to add decks that play more to my play style. I'm not really the, the big meme tank guy. Um, but yeah, the gameplay right now at the moment is very solid. So to put this in contrast, I think Steel Division 2 has at least 20 divisions basically in there or battle groups, however you want to call them, or decks for just the Germans. And I think I think even the Western Allies in Steel Division, which mostly focus on, this, uh, on the Eastern Front, I think has about 10 Western Allied divisions and I probably... 20 to 30 um, Soviet ones, and I, I don't know about Wargame, but I think it's also about 20 or... Basically every country had several, or...? Uh, yeah, in Wargame, Red Dragon, towards its late life, I can't remember the exact number, but it was a sizable number. You had pretty much all of Warsaw packed, I think there were like one or two missing. Um, we had the Soviets, of course, North Korea, China, um, Finland on Red 4, which was always a point of contention for some people. <laughs> I can um, imagine, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Yugoslavia, and then NATO, there was, or Blue 4, there were even more. Like you had, you know, Korea, or South Korea and uh, Japan. Um, you had Australia, even Canada, uh, the US, of course, and then a whole bunch of, of NATO countries in Europe, um, and also South Africa and Israel. Um, so there was, there was tons in, in Red Dragon as well. Um, their intention with Warno is once the game is actually released, they'll have, I think they said 16 battle groups, um, which, which is right now the initial launch, they're focusing on uh, Sentog, so that's the, the US command in um, Central Europe, sitting across, I believe, from the Fulda Gap, um, and then counterparts on the uh, Red Force side of things, so primarily it'll be I think they've mentioned that there's going to be U.S., East Germany, West Germany, Soviet, 
I'd have to check the dev blog again. I can't remember if there's going to be anybody else in there right, uh, right from launch. Um, they also have the intention of eventually adding the other commands, so north and south, and you know the British and the French are going to make an appearance, and the Canadians, I'm sure, and even more Warsaw Pact stuff, you know, the Czechoslovakians, that kind of thing. Um, so I'm sure down the line we'll have mountains of content, but at the moment we are really in a they're in a stage where they're still doing things like they're tweaking the UI, they're tweaking how fast the game is paced, they are doing all sorts of stuff. They haven't even like they're just starting to touch some of the balancing from what I've noticed, but for the most part, they're still on foundational stuff um, in early access at the moment. Um, and again, they've been very receptive to feedback, so that's really good to see. Um, and the game looks visually very good. Uh, its performance is something that I'm not super happy with, but also I was going back into Steel Division 2 and it the same weird performance quirks were in Steel Division 2 as well, so I don't know what's with the Iris Zoom engine. Like, if you if you zoom in on a stand of trees and nothing is going on, and then your, your FPS tanks into, like, the 30s for some reason, and then you zoom back out and it's fine again. It's I, I haven't noticed any problems in that regard, but I only have an FPS counter running. For me, usually the problem is when I zoom in that it gets so loud that I don't hear the players I play with. <laughs> <laughs> in Steel Division, I usually zoom in and then, oh, what did you say? What did you say again? Sorry, I need to zoom out. I mean, this was a special effect, it was a problem on, on stream. So, yeah, I mean, we, we should add here, it's, so it's very important. So I followed Steel Division quite a long time and Steel Division, I think it took about, I don't know, one or two years before they got the, the famous uh, range patch where they completely overhauled the range of the different units. In the beginning, I think nearly everything in the 37 millimeter pack had a range of, of two kilometers. And then they adapted it that, that the, each weapon got its own range, basically. So only the very heavy guns got two kilometer range and smaller ones sometimes only get 500 to 750. So this was huge in dust because I should add here from what I know, I talked to several game developers even before I had a channel or something. I also worked a little bit in the industry. Balancing is one of the hardest things in games. And Eugene games are extremely complex. They, as I mentioned with Steel Division 1, I think it's one of the few games that actually really get combined arms warfare right. So this doesn't mean it's realistic. Or historically accurate but you have to use the different arms infantry tanks indirect fire with mortars or artillery to be effective in this game and just um, balancing everything around this looks easy for many people but it's highly complex and very difficult to do and so I completely understand from from that perspective that they go forward with, with this approach now and that to a certain degree. I mean, you, also the, the patches, I mean, you have this with other games as well, that there, there's some, they make some balancing changes and in the test phase, sometimes there are already problems and people point it out, but then they put it out in the, in the open and there are huge problems. So sometimes in the test phase, they work fine, but then, you, then people look for exploits or, or you play against players that play differently and some, suddenly you realize, oh, there is a huge issue. Yeah, definitely. Um, and as far as like looking at a very mature Eugen game like Steel Division 2 or uh, Red Dragon, for the most part, the balance is shockingly good for games with that, that much content in them. Um, Probably better generally, I would say, in Steel Division 2 than it is in Red Dragon. Uh, in Red Dragon, they had just the, I think the, the battle group system is a better way of doing things than the nation system because the with the old nation system where you would just have access to every single US unit they had in the game if you did an unspecialized uh, US deck, uh, it really created an, an ultra meta driven. Um, kind of deck building and they're they're very quickly optimal ways to build a u.s deck maybe a couple of units that were that were viable to switch out or not i find with steel division when 
they narrowed it down to specific battle groups, which can be based either on divisions or other units. They're not always divisions. Um, is since they they kind of try to limit things to units that were actually in a division for the most part. Um, it means that people have to actually make some choices, which I think is good for gameplay. Um, that's one thing that I've seen the, the more, at least some elements of the war game community are a little bit mad about in Warno, but personally, I think it's a very good change because I was, as someone who had, I think I have about 900 hours in Red Dragon, um, I was kind of tired of the, of the nation level cookie cutter stuff, um, where particularly the, so they re recently released a balanced patch with the South Africa DLC, which only came out a couple months ago, I think, um, which put the balancing in a much better state than it was previously. But before that, really, it was just, you were fighting the same decks over and over and over and over again because that was just the way to play Red Dragon, and it was exceptionally boring. Um, and, you, you, you know, you had whatever 1,800 units or whatever they have in um, in Red Dragon, and you would see the same five or six over and over and over and over again. And usually the ones that you saw all the time were also among the most annoying to fight because they were, you know, underpriced or somehow overperforming in some way. And it was just, it got tiring. And with Steel Division 2, I've seen less of that. Um, and then in, hopefully in warning order, um, right now it's hard to say because they have literally one battle group for each side. So you see, see the same units over and over again because that's all the game has right now. Um, but hopefully it will kind of continue in that Steel Division 2 lineage of offering a lot more variation for things. Um, my particular choice in decks when it comes to Eugen games is I tend to play more of the oddball stuff that you don't get to play ever. Like, for example, the thought of me playing with the U.S. like puts me to sleep. It's like, oh, oh I'll play the U.S. like I do in every video game ever. Um, whereas in the one it's very strong advantage of Eugen games is that, one, the setting you don't see that often. I, I, I guess this is something that's probably never come up on, on the channel before here, but I love the cold war setting um i'm not like an expert on the cold war or anything of that nature but i just find it fascinating so getting to play games in that era is always um always gets my gears turning and uh i also the oddball nations that eugen adds even in the in, in the second world war games that's why i love steel division 2 so much it's like there's like romanian divisions in there there's hungarian ones yeah there's um the slow got all these different division. divisions and even even for the major nations, it's not just the greatest hits over and over yeah. again. You know, you can you can play a German division that doesn't have a single Panzer IV in it, like, um, which is what makes the gameplay uh, so compelling and building decks so satisfying. And in the Cold War context, I actually usually main as East Germany, um, of all things, because it's just oddball, right? Like they they have their own peculiar kind of deck setup even when it was national level um they always were using kind of technology that was not the state-of-the-art soviet stuff it was usually you know one or two generations or more behind um which for me was always very compelling you know it was, it was something different i wasn't just using you know for example like looking at something like world in conflict where it really was just the the greatest hits of either side um and that's kind of what it was that's not to say World of Conflict was a bad game, by the way. I love it. Um, and then I think uh, Broken Arrow is, from what I've seen of it, people people were originally pitching it as like a a direct war game competitor, but watching gameplay, it looks closer to a spiritual successor to World in Conflict, uh, which is interesting. Um, but that's what I love about the Eugen games. It's just the, the, the kooky units and battle groups. Um, in Red Dragon and Land Air War, was there by any was there Austria or Switzerland in there? I don't think so. Uh, they've never had Austria or Switzerland uh, in any of the war games yet. Um, Those would be really interesting to see at one point. Was that, Austria was neutral, wasn't it? I can't remember. <laughs> no. Just, yeah, but but yeah. we <laughs> we assumed that the the Soviets would go probably for our territory, <laughs> and I think our plan was more or less. We should hold them off for several days or something. It was just like we should delay them by several days. That that that, that was the whole 
plan. I mean, I, this is from what I recall, what I had 20 years ago at school when, when an officer was visiting. So, no, this was more than 20 years ago. And I think he was actually, I think he stated that everyone laughed at us, like we, we assumed that we hold off that long. And, th and then he said that actually when the, the Iron Curtain fell, that actually the assessment was more or less correct. Although nowadays I would doubt it to a certain degree because I'm not sure if they got access to the archives that early. So, so it's, it's <laughs> I was at this year, yeah. So I'm, I'm not sure, but that's, that's what I was told, so. so. And yeah, I was chatting with um, Tacker actually, who appeared on the channel once a, a long time yeah. ago, because um, he really knows his Red Army stuff, particularly yeah. Cold War era. Um, and I was asking him like about full to gap and stuff like that. Um, and he says there's still a lot of uncertainty there about true Soviet intentions. Um, because of course on the NATO side, a lot of attention was paid to, okay, they're coming through the full to gap. Um, whereas Tucker explained to me this from what we, what we can piece together on the Soviet side, there's a lot open to interpretation there. There's different, um, theories about what. Red Army intentions actually were. Um, it wasn't just slam dunk, and it's just because right now they still play so much of that close to the chest, which shouldn't probably surprise anyone listening in now, because I mean, even Second World War era Red yeah, Army stuff, a lot of that stuff is getting hard to get. <laughs> um, so stuff from 1989 is uh, similarly exceptionally hard to get a hold of. Um, he pitched like a variety of interesting things for me like there's there's a theory out there that they might have actually tried to lure the or draw the nato forces into a more offensive posture um because they had analyzed that you know nato so much nato's planning was wholly defensive that if they were thrust into an offensive situation they might have actually struggled um and there's uh, and then there's all the way all the way through to stuff like okay maybe they are actually going through the full to gap so there's a lot of uncertainty there um yeah. on that note i guess back related back to war no is that there are going to be army general campaigns like there were in uh, steel division two for those who don't know it's you've got like an operational map that you move units around on i haven't played it a whole lot i think have you played this the army general stuff a lot yeah the, the thing is uh it, it's a huge time sink so I, I really like it, but at the same time, it was like, yeah, it's one more mission and, and then it's it's five in the morning and the sun goes up and it's like, okay, yeah. Um, so for, for me, I, I tried to stay um, uh, away from Army General at one point. I, I, I never tried the cooperative mode, which I was waiting for and then it came and, and then look, didn't look at it. But yeah, that, that I mean, it was also really cool, like, because there you had like sometimes with you got a security division german security divisions fighting partisans and then you actually see how it how it plays out if nobody has anything motorized because then it's like 10 minutes walking to the first uh first exchange of fire from both sides or five minutes like just walking the infantry and then you see yeah how how slow they actually are so i don't think <laughs> this would would happen now in 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 Wano because i i don't think in the Cold War, there was anything that was not motorized at that point, probably, but hard to tell. And also, it would be quite interesting how they pull it off. Maybe they, they change it as well. So I, what I've seen, for instance, and and which we probably should mention, the oddest choice so far is the deck builder. Because for me, I looked at the deck builder and was like, I was completely confused. I, I played Red Dragon a bit, but steel division quite a lot and it, I, I don't know the deck builder is extremely counterintuitive but i think you mentioned they're already reworking it yeah the deck builder was something that disappointed me greatly um uh, for somebody who's less familiar you actually outside of like uh, instead of a traditional rts uh, with eugen games at least for the more recent ones like the war game series and steel division you pick a battle group or a nation and then you have you can build your deck from there. So you pick up from all the different infantry units and tanks and planes and all that. And you have certain parameters, activation points. Um, so you, you pick what units you're actually bringing into a battle, um, which is something I love. I've played, you know, I play a lot of deck game. I probably played more deck game than actual war game. 
um, is just building decks and looking at unit stats and all of that. Um, so when I went into the deck builder for Warno, I was like, oh, because they've got like the UI thing for the cards. It's bo- on the bottom and it like blocks the 3D model. And yeah. it's, it's somehow it's somehow taking up more screen space and telling you less, which is kind of impressive. I, um, I personally think they tried to, to make a really innovative approach here and also from the design that, that looks more um, immersive with the, with the folder and everything. But then mm-hmm. they didn't have time to pull it off or something. I, I this is this is my assumption because it, it makes no sense otherwise to to have or, or that the person who built it was so familiar with it that it didn't recognize um, how how counterintuitive it is to use even for somebody who is experienced in all predecessor games like you and I. I'm I'm way less in. War game way more in Steel Division, but I also played all most games. I played Red Dragon and Druze and Steel Division 44 and Steel Division 2. Yeah, it's it's definitely rough. There's a lot of functionality that's gone, or if it's still there, it's less intuitive. Um, like you did mention earlier, from what I can see on the Discord server, um, and this is coming directly from the Eugen devs as well, so it's not people theory crafting, is they are working on some improved version of the deck builders. So like with so many things in this early access game, that could change quite possibly dramatically. Um, so at least they are hearing the feedback there. Um, I, anyone I've spoken to is not a fan of the current deck builder UI uh, for Warno. Um, I think it's personally, I think it is a major step back from Steel Division 2 or yeah. uh, Red Dragon. And I mean, there are some other, I, I mean, when we played on the weekend, the, the hotkeys were not implemented yet. They were assigned already F1, F2, F3, so maybe they changed because there was a patch yesterday already. And yeah, but, but generally, as, as we said initially, the, the, the base game is really solid. There's still some bugs, like, I mean, Skyrim Eam has bugs in, after 10 years. So <laughs> <laughs> and and as a computer scientist, I was telling you guys these these things are extremely complex and and I can often understand why there are bugs and problems there. Because yeah, it these these are mega projects beyond and yeah, Heisenbachs and everything. <laughs> Yeah, and to I guess and to really drive that point home for those people that are maybe curious about Warno, they played Red Dragon and some you know, and they're kind of holding their breath. If you want a more stable game, definitely wait. Um, the pace of development is moving pretty fast, but right now you do feel like it's like an alpha test. Um, but the gameplay really is good. And for those of you who are worried that it's just reskin Steel Division Two, it's definitely not. Actually, I was quite surprised at how much respect they have for war uh like the war game feel um it feels closer to war game red dragon than it does to steel division 2 but it still pulls things from steel division 2 so it's not just you know completely just ported over red dragon um there's a lot of quality of life improvements there's certain gameplay mechanics that people uh, that played a lot of steel division 2 will be familiar with but I feel it's a very good blend. I was very pleasantly surprised uh, by just how much like war game the game feels while also porting over some of the best aspects of Steel Division 2, um, in my opinion. Yeah, I've seen I... some, some people posting cringe about, um, about this stuff. Because there's, there's always going to be that segment of the audience that's like, it's not exactly Red Dragon, so therefore it's bad. Yeah, I mean, um, it's 10 years after. Or even yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but things happy. like, you know, I mean, it's got a line of sight indicator. The units generally act smarter. Um, I'm trying to remember what else they've pulled over from Steel Division Two. The, so, oh, the the orders, order. uh, orders <laughs> during deployment. Yes, orders during deployment. Thank. I know you don't. <laughs> but, I, I because I, when I, I went from I went from Steel Division to to Red Dragon, I was deploying my troops, and then why can't I give commands? What? <laughs> um, oh, one other thing I will mention, because White Run, it seems to have vanished now, but uh, when the game first came out, people were concerned that the scale was different, like that there were fewer units. Um, speaking again as somebody who's played an absurd amount of war game, I find, like, at first I was initially worried about that because you saw the increase in unit prices and um, 
availability for some units is still quite small. But when you're actually playing, um, I'm pleased to report that it feels the same as Wargame Red Dragon um, in terms of scale. The only exception to that is if you're clowning, like if if you wanted those cards of base, you know, or T55 A's that you get like 34 in a card and you can spam them out in a 10 v 10 game and it's totally ineffective and no person playing seriously does that. Um, then okay, yes, it's smaller in scale, but for people who are playing Wait, uh, the, Wargame the... Red Dragon in a more normal way... <laughs> um, we, we don't know this yet because I think the, the, the weakest Soviet tank was the T64 BV. In it. Yeah, that's that's the other thing is right now I think the worst tank is the T80B in the in the 79th Guards. Um, so this is like the, the two divisions they have in here are the equivalent of just nothing but high-end um, kit that's all lower availability. Uh, I suspect once they have some smaller or some weaker stuff, like, you know, second line East German stuff or whatever, that you're going to start seeing a lot higher availabilities and lower prices. Um, as far as the doubled unit price cost, because uh, I saw some people drawing the conclusion from that, that the game was way smaller in scale, they have doubled income as well. Um, the reason why they've doubled prices is to add more nuance to the five point uh, price differences, because... For anyone who's very experienced with war game, um, they were aware of this where, particularly at the low price end, like infantry and stuff, the five point price increments meant that sometimes like a unit that was 10 points would be too strong, but at 15 points, they're not worth taking. Um, and there was nothing in between. With doubling of prices, they have a little bit more nuance with the five point price increments um, for finer balancing, uh, which is nice. Uh, I can completely agree that it doesn't feel like Steel Division. At least that is my impression from... Because we played a bit and I never zoomed in fully, which I usually do all the time in Steel Division 2. And it was mostly because I, I kind of feel, feel unfamiliar unfam with it. Although it is it's so close, it, it's kind of weird. I, I can still see I, I'm, not, I'm not on my home turf, let's put it that. That could also be the error, but for the most part I... I, I know the, 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 the basic equipment, especially because for these high-end divisions, yeah, I, I kind of know what a T80 is. I know what an, an Abrahams is and, and the Bradley, of course, and what a Law is. And then, yeah, okay. And then I know, okay, they're guided and tank missiles and I can determine that on the, the Sucklos, I think it's called, yeah. And, and so I know to a certain degree that my stuff around, but yeah, it, it didn't feel like Sea Division to me neither. Yeah, that'll be a nice... Um, one thing for people who are maybe less familiar with Cold War equipment and that kind of thing is... I've noticed the tool tipping is better in Morno compared to Red Dragon, which is a very low bar. There was very little tool tipping in Red Dragon, and what was there wasn't particularly helpful most of the time. Um, but I've noticed like there's been an effort to make this a little bit more approachable for people who aren't... It, it, you're well versed in every single acronym, you know, M close and SAC close and solid and yeah, <laughs> seed and yeah. Um, so they, they do a better job of explaining a lot of that kind of thing. They have uh, different color coding for rough unit quality. Um, again, for a super experienced stat warrior, you're going to be able to go in and see all the nuance with the stats, but for somebody who's maybe less experienced, they're going to they're going to recognize that a, a unit that is red or has a little red square um, triangle in the corner of the unit card is probably worse than one that has a, a blue triangle in the corner. And even it if actually they don't writes know what the A, B, and C, I think. It, it yeah, they have some kind of. Uh, I'd have to check again what the what they. And I, I know they've changed unit. Um, training that used to be training to just saying like good or very good or whatever um to be more approachable to i think to people that aren't as familiar with that kind of lingo and, and um, for aircraft they added i'm not sure maybe that was in there already they, they described the basic mission of each aircraft for instance there's written um a defense and i think also in brackets in the unit name they include the ammunition or t or type of weapon they use for instance like cluster he for, for the oh for the yes zone. yes they do that yeah so, that's so that is really helpful if you don't know which 
Phantom oder MiG-23, was der Shortcut afterwards means. So they have it in, in, in brackets usually like HE, okay, you know, okay, they, they drop regular fragmentation bombs. And then cluster, okay, you know, that that's armor piercing usually. And, and I think what was the other? Yeah, they were napalm. Yeah. So that is also quite helpful, especially in the heat of the battle for, for somebody who is not completely familiar with it. Yeah. So I guess really to to really sum up, I mean, from this from this seasoned Eugen game veteran, I am very pleased with Warno. Um, again, they need to just keep adding content and keep patching, and they have it seems like they have every intent in doing so. Um, and with this foundation. Uh, as long as they keep supporting it for, and there's, you know, from Eugen's past record, they probably will support it for years to come. Um, it's going to be an outstanding game. Like I'm, this is basically my dream game was a Cold War, war game, but with the quality of life improvements from Steel Division Two, and that's what we're getting. Also, functional AI. I should mention that because I'm a huge comp stomp guy and now that they're adding an army general campaign that's going to be important as well and while the AI in in Warno is not amazing it's it's functional which is a huge step up from Red Dragon where the AI was in my opinion it was broken um, it was incapable of doing anything other than emptying out particular parts of the deck um, and then just fast moving them down the road at you um, it was it was entirely unplayable um, with the war uh, AI and Warno and same with Steel Division 2 is that it'll it'll actually fight you <laughs> which is a good thing yeah and I'm looking also forward because um, it, it's an, a rather easy way to learn new NATO counters and also to get into more uh, yeah by the way, you can switch in the in the UI between NATO counters and, and RTS symbols, and which is very important. And, but you need to click the apply button because I forgot that it doesn't warn you about that. At least at that point patch I had, and and for me it's like getting into rather easily getting a broad overview about um, more Cold War equipment that I have uh, the next time I go in the museum that I probably can identify it more easily, and then. It makes it also easier for for future videos on cold war stuff at least there's some plan i mean there are already some and seeing the mod in action and the bmp and everything so so i, I see this also for a good chance that I, I might be covering more cold war equipment in the future as well because i'm also getting more interested if i see, usually see it in game so yeah basically as justin said if you wanna wanna play the game if you know like I told a friend today, you know, you eventually will buy it anyway because all the other people have it right now. So you might buy it already now because you will play it down the line anyway. And and he said, yeah, I think you're right. But if uh, but if you want to save your money for an hour or something and you want to wait for the finished game, probably wait one or two years, ideally. And I guess it should be probably one year that it's, I assume, mostly done and two to three years that you have the full scope with all the function functionality and also a lot of content because the Eugene games were always about besides rules about the huge deck building aspect I think and if if you come from Steel Division 2 like with, with 50 or 60 divisions and then you have two you might be a bit <laughs> <laughs> turned off but I think in a few months it will be already a bit different so thank you very much Justin yeah no worries I always love to talk about Eugen games <laughs> <laughs> and thank you for watching and see you next time bye